Hello, hello, hello. It is Charlie without the camera this time. I just had a little, I guess you could call it a breakthrough. So if you've followed along this channel for any given amount of time, you probably know about my, you know, water interaction and, and the landscape interaction and, you know, render targets, blah, blah, blah. The, the water looks like this. I've recently added a bit of like foam around like the midpoint of the, um, the sort of radiating interaction mask for the water and stuff. So if we have a quick little look at what the render target looks like while we're, you know, splashing around in the water, um, you can see that, you know, it kind of creates this, it's an iterative blur um, that creates, you know, a smooth kind of circle around the player, but leaves a trail. But the cool thing about this is that because it is just reading like a depth difference, a cool idea that I had was that for, you know, an ocean or something, um, rather than try and put the kind of, I guess like the foam trails into, you know, the shader itself, which would be a huge anus penis, um, we could instead have another plane that sits underneath. So you can see these bits right here where these black lines are. Um, we could basically have one underneath it uh, that has like matching, I guess like parameters for, you know, how we're generating the waves. Um, so these, these waves are just based on distance to world origin. Um, Cause in our game, you know, the wind always blows towards the center of the world. Um, and so creating, you know, this kind of extra layer down here, which doesn't have any of the complex code and stuff. It's just got the, you know, the wave calculation. And then we kind of clip the top of it. So only the very peaks of where the waves would be, uh, you know, showing up as this like black line here. Um, anyway, so in action, it ends up looking like this, which is pretty spectacular. Um, and so this is just using that same water interaction render target, um, which results in these really nice, you know, it looks like some crests and then it kind of leaves a trail of the foam, which, you know, uh, dies off as it beh goes behind the wave. Um, we can also make it, as you can see here, it like foams up way more around this um, object. So around the distance fields, uh, which is a nice little extra touch. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is like nowhere near finished. This is like the first maybe 15 minutes of work on this shader. Um, and then I got really tired because I'd been streaming for about eight hours. <laughs> Um, but it's definitely very promising so far. So all that's really left to do is to, you know, obviously make the waves a little bit more complex and add a few more, you know, microwaves and stuff. Um, and then if we have a look at what the render target actually looks like, it's very interesting. So you can see here, we've got the, uh, you know, the crests of the waves. And then they're leaving this trail that just blurs away into nothing until the next one, obviously, um, you know, takes over. And you can see right here in the center where our player is, and we've got this sort of um, thingamajig, that bit of bit of land. Um, you can see that it, you know, creates more foam around it, which is really cool. So yeah, I just wanted to share that uh, little bit of an update. Um, super very early stages. I'm thinking for like collision, um, just ignore the fact that there's no cell shader when I exit. <laughs> um, for the collision, so obviously this is just all world position offset stuff, right? But because these waves are generated using only maths, so you know, distance to world origin, and then we divide that by a number and then run it through a sine wave, and you know, we end up getting these ups and downs and blah, blah, blah. We could replicate that inside a blueprint of some sort. Um, and then we could kind of like fake collision and buoyancy based on 
you know, the difference between where the, the physical collision is, so like right at the middle here, or we'd probably shift it up to be, um, you know, the, the maximum point of the, of the water plane. Um, and then we could calculate the offset based on, you know, just the same mathematical formula. And so that way we could, you know, if something needs to go up, move it up until it reaches the point that it's supposed to be at. And then, you know, if it, if it needs to be lower, move it down. And we could kind of fake the, you know, things floating on the water, even the character swimming through the water. Uh, we'd be able to, you know, compensate for the big waves and stuff without actually using collision. And that means that we wouldn't actually have to update the collision, you know, which would be stupendously expensive for something this big. Um, it would just be like a flat collision plane, and then we just use some math to like offset it, if that makes sense. So yeah, I hope that you found this very satisfying to look at. Um, but I guess with that, we say goodbye. Goodbye.